to the Dirty Bag Podcast. I'm your host, Cookie, and today I felt like it was very important for us to get into some chatter, chatter, chit, chit about some reproductive justice. Now, y'all know I like credibility in these streets, mm -hmm. and I like y'all to hear from those that are on the ground doing the work, especially as it pertains to black women. So that is precisely what we are doing today. So I got two special guests here. I'm going to let both of them introduce themselves. Um... My name is Kiana Arnold. <coughs> Y'all bear with me. I got a little something going on with my throat. Um, Kiana Arnold. I am a full spectrum doula here in D Dallas, Texas, and I'm also part of the birth justice team at the Afia Center. And yeah, I just you know get paid to be me. Take her black women. That's what's up. And I'm Sorrel. I am the director of programs at the Afia Center, and um, I'm happy to be in the space today. Yes, ma'am. So here's the deal. We all know what's going on right now. Right. So obviously the government has decided they want to come back in and kind of tell us what to do with our bodies. Now, y'all have kind of been, first of all, just kind of give the backstory of how you guys came into the center, how you got into this work. Oh, wow. So I'll start. Um, <laughs> so um, I was already a doula. A oh, crazy thing. I met Marsha. So a little thing about the AFIA Center. Marsha Jones is the executive director of the, at the AFIA Center. And the Fia Center is one of the only black woman, uh, black woman founded and black woman led reproductive justice organizations. And so I was at a screening um, for about uh, for a, 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 a film um, about maternal mortality. Okay. And so after this screening, Marsha was to speak on a panel. This was some years ago. Marsha wasn't driving then. And so at the <laughs> end of the screening, she was like, I don't feel like waiting on my daughter. She just was being herself at the end. I don't feel like waiting on my daughter. Can somebody give me a ride? <laughs> just And I didn't know. I was like, where you live? You know, like, ma'am, where you live? And she was like, ma'am. <laughs> and she told me where she lived. I was like, I think I got to drive that way. I don't mind driving you. Right. And she just got in the car with me. <laughs> and so I started telling her, I was like, you know, I moved here from St. Louis, Missouri, and that I was a doula. At that time, I was still director of marketing for a hospice company. And so okay. I still hadn't left healthcare completely. I just was kind of doing um, doula work on the side, and I was explaining to her how you know I just hated working in corporate, and <laughs> you know, there weren't really any black women doing what I was doing. And, we all. and um, I um, I wanted to be able to be a full time doula, and I, at first I didn't even know I could get really get paid to be a doula. I had started, <laughs> I did not know. What did you think you was doing? So, <laughs> let me tell you, even in St. Louis, I was like that person, like, that was the birth coach for all of my family. Okay. Uh, the first person I ever supported having a baby, believe it or not, I was 15. My cousin was 15, I was 15, she was having a baby, and I was the person with her. And I don't know, it just was natural that I took care of her. And I literally, in my grandfather's church, in our family, I was, out, there is nobody, none of my sisters, none of my cousins, and most of our friends that could tell you in St. Louis that I wasn't there when they had their baby. I, everybody, they would call. They'd be like, Keanu, I want you to make sure you come. I got cousins in New York. They, I took care of them having their babies. Anyway, so I knew it was something. And at um, Barnes Hospital in St. Louis, they had some type of pilot program for a minute that they had doulas coming around helping folks. So I knew that doulas were a real thing. I never saw a black doula before I came to Texas. Okay. And I didn't know, like, you could really earn a living doing it. So I'm riding with Marsha telling her, you know, I'm a doula. I took this training, and that, that my trainer, um, Nakia, she was encouraging me to try to leave corporate and get paid as a doula. And so I'm telling this woman that I don't know, you know, I'm stranger, she's a stranger about these ideas and plans. And she just started encouraging me. She was like, no, that's really a thing, and you really should do it. And she really, like, Marcia is good at, like, talking her shit. Like, she make you believe in yourself. <laughs> you be like, Come yeah, on, I now. really can. <laughs> I really can. And so, and she said, you know what? I think I'm going to do it, too. I think I'm going <laughs> to. She did. She said, I think I'm going to do it, too. Matter of fact, I'm going to probably be a midwife. And then she told me a little bit about the Fia Center. And I just was like, oh, okay. Made it to her house, dropped her off. And um, I followed her on social media after that. And so periodically we would just message each other. She would message me because I also make, like, herbal stuff. And so she would be like, okay, make me this, make me that. And um, I had your son. 
<laughs> I talked about it on the episode. <laughs> yeah, honey, get you together. My and neck so, was heavy. Yeah, and so Marsha, um, <laughs> it'll get you right now. <laughs> she, um, she, um, she stayed. She actually kind of just stayed in a relationship with me like that, and I just was like, whatever that is, she do. I'm, I want to do it. Like I really like would say like I would joke with her and be like. I, Make my way over there to where you uh, you at, and she just right. be like, okay. <laughs> and I just knew I wanted to be over there. Like I really kind of manifested that. I kept talking about it, and then um, a few. Then I met um, at that time Deneen. She was there at the organization, and um, I took a I took like um a, a, a like a contract position on a, um a, pr- a project. Right. And then from there, I just wouldn't go away. <laughs> I, just, I just wouldn't go away. I just was like, hey, I, I wouldn't have I applied a lot of pressure to Marsha. She, she, stuck, she stuck on beside me now. Period. She found me a little space up in there. <laughs> right on. How about you? So I came to the organization uh, almost 10 years ago, actually. I had just, I had been in Dallas for about a year. I was looking to, like, connect to a community. And I actually got connected to Marsha through another community project that I was working on. Marsha was doing, or Marsha and the Sia Center was doing honors. And um, I was just in awe about, like, the work that they were doing and, you know, the the relationship between black women and poverty. And, you know, I hadn't really, like, I was like, oh, this to black women, this is happening, you know, to black women and the way that she was approaching the work. Um, and I, I had an event planning business at the time, so I was like, oh, you know, I need some clients. I'm trying to make this footprint <laughs> in Dallas. You know, <laughs> I can do some pro bono stuff. And they were, tur- Fia Center was turning five. So, like, I did their five year anniversary um, event. And I was like, oh, okay. Y'all, this is a great organization, but y'all need a little, y'all need a little help. <laughs> <laughs> you need me. <laughs> you know, and so at that, I had, a, I, I had a bachelor's degree. I had a master's degree, like, wasn't doing anything with it. And I'm like, somebody needs to get all this that I've got to offer. So I worked for quite some time. I volunteered for um, about three years, and then um, the organization got funded. I was able to come on as a um, consultant. Um, I was one of the um, consultants that worked to create or spearhead the first Texas Black Women Reproductive Justice um, Summit. So the summit we just had, yeah. I was part of the first one. Um, and so that was, you know, that was great. Stayed. We did the second one in 2018. Um, and then I left for a little bit um, and came back. Uh, Marsha brought me back during the pandemic. Right. And I worked, um, you know, I came in as a communications manager and then just kind of as we're things shifted in the organization and now I've, I've landed the director of programs position period period was mm-hmm. able to walk away from corporate <laughs> Let everybody's dream walk away and then go right back into that joint. i ain't going back though <laughs> but listen so um so yeah so i've been i mean being at the afia center has like like what I've been able to accomplish at the Afia Center, you know, just even coming back in the two, you know, in the two years that I've been there and being like the director of programs, like I, I imagine like what that would have taken me like in white space. You know what I'm saying? It so. takes you a minute and you gotta get signed off. It ain't what you know, it's who you know. You exactly. gotta be the right performative colored, mm-hmm. all of that. Yeah. So the summit was huge. So for those that don't know like what the summit was and the purpose, kind of get into that yeah. so they'll know. The next time. So the um, summit is is basically like in response to like black women being left out of the conversation um, about what's happening with black women, black women not being represented when it comes to policy change. And so we have created this space, this convening where black women across the state of Texas, although we get folks from outside of Texas, but it's really mainly to elevate, um, you know, black women in Texas, the issues surrounding, you know, what black women are experiencing here in (laughs) in this state. And um, we have a series of um, workshops or sessions led by some amazing like black sisters um, across, you know, across the country that come in and we talk about things. Um, Well, this, so this summit this year, we focused on birth justice. Um, you know, because of everything that's happening, you know, in the country, it was really important for us to like really make that connection with how, you know, how we approach the work from a reproductive justice framework. So 
we talked everything from, you know, lies, myths, and truths about abortion. Um, we had a session, Childless by Choice, you know, black women who, you know, choose to not have children and Those like forever aunties yes the forever aunties <laughs> forever and aunties yes. that's, aunties. that's a real thing that's that's a beautiful thing like those are important folk in our community they're vital yeah. folk forever aunties yes. rich auntie <laughs> you give off rich son. auntie you're yeah. a whole mama but you definitely <laughs> encompass the rich auntie Maybe. vibe i'm a whole grandmother <laughs> <laughs> Oh, grandma to look like the rich yeah. auntie because people don't understand half the time the rich I'm the rich aunties, mm -hmm. the forever aunties are really what keep the village going. Yes. Like when the mamas is on E, mm -hmm. them aunties step right, in. Right. And those aunties prove themselves to be a safe space for our um, children to confide in, to help them navigate a lot of parts of their uh, reproductive health. Yeah. You know what I mean? Aunties are important. Kids tell they aunties could. everything. They tell them everything. So that that's always a safe space, and it's uh, um, it's um, it's part of that kind of respite care that mamas be needing. You yes. Know what I mean? Yeah. So because you thing. you hooked me up last year, so um, if you remember season one, um, I did the two part uh, series for the fourth trimester, which we had black birth oh, workers okay. and. Being in a space, we was on Zoom, with black women and us all telling our stories, I didn't plan on us getting as emotional mm -hmm. as we did, but you don't realize, like, we really do, we get expected to pick up the slack and just be sh too damn strong. Like, we can't, we at a point where we just can't afford to do it no right, more. Right. So we have to start asking for help now. Mm -hmm. And with this conversation around abortion, first of all, it's just been rough because people don't understand abortions and why they happen and things like that. Right, right. So um, one thing you said about being triggered in that space, talking with those other birth workers, um, that's true. Any, so I was really shocked uh, at the summit. We had a session talking about um, um, menopause. I mean, we addressed everything. We had one a session affirming trans um, and non-binary folk. Um, trans and gender non-conforming. Give me right with my terms, yeah. y'all, because you know I be out of I be out of order. It's just it's just my head, not my heart. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and but the session where we talked about uh, menopause, um, and we had to go back. So it's triggering for went black women when we have to start exploring those um, spaces, like you know where did our sexual experiences begin. What's right. expected from us physically after using these organs that we have in such a laborious way. Right. You know, and so I can see how that forced trimester conversation was triggering. I caught some of that. It was a, that was a good one. That was a good show. Um, Went to but a dark space after that. I yeah. was not prepared for that. <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> it is. And I always encourage people, when you're going to get into these conversations, you have you something um, of – a sister, a spiritualist in the community, her name's Venetia. She has, it's called a trigger action plan. Oh. So I want you, I encourage all folk, all of my mamas, um, we work, that's part of um, our, me consulting them, getting their birth plan. So we have like a trigger action plan. So what is the plan for when this happens or that happens? Right. You know what I mean? Like if it's, if it's music, if it's essential oils, if it's that person that you call, if it's rest, if it's, you know, feeling free, learning the language to speak your truth. Like, right. what does that look, look like? I encourage us to make sure we have a plan because we're going to be triggered working in these spaces. These aren't this. Right. We cannot be having these conversations, and we can't really be serious about doing this work and not feel it. And that's what I learned. I was like, okay, I had to say this for myself with this platform. If you're going to address certain topics, mm -hmm. don't you go into a topic and you ain't got the tools mm -hmm. For the aftermath. Yes. For that one, I needed tools my damn self. Mm -hmm. Everybody else in that call kind of knew what, but for mm -hmm. me, I got off, and I was like, it was four of us, and now it's just me. And, and I don't know what to do with this. you had just had a baby, and I think that um, yeah. you you may not have realized that you were still in, like, the throes of postpartum. I didn't know I was. Kind of like postpartum sadness. Like, I don't use the term postpartum depression lo loosely. Uh, some folks be like, oh, I had postpartum depression. Uh, right. Postpartum depression is a whole clinical diagnosis, right? Right. And so you can have a little bit of, you know, postpartum mood swings. Yeah. Postpartum is just that period. 
after you've had that baby. So right. And so it's normal to have an influx of hormones and changes and some sadness and the blues. Yeah. You know, we're talking about something different if it transitions to real depression right. and then maybe after depression to postpartum psychosis or something like that. Those right. are different things and we kind of lose that use that postpartum depression term loose, but that's a whole clinical diagnosis and most of us are experiencing normal postpartum sadness or blues or yeah. you know those things that we're supposed to feel and um because we're conditioned to always want to feel good we panic right. about i gotta feel better i gotta be feel i gotta feel better i gotta get better i gotta be sometimes you just need to sit and feel right like feel <laughs> what you're feeling like sometimes it's okay to be even and coast it ain't always got to be you know, like this whole self care and be positive <laughs> movement. <laughs> this should be like blowing me sometimes because it'd be like, you know, self care. I gotta do this because I gotta be feeling good. I gotta vibrate high. <laughs> Shit, girl, sometimes no just stay alive today. Sit down, just sit down. Just sit down <laughs> and, and breathe. Breathe for these 24 hours. Make it to tomorrow. And just stay in the bed. I'm gonna ask, how do y'all feel about folks using that term? Because right now everybody wants to be a healer. Yeah. And do events like we're going to do self care and we're going to heal. How do y'all feel heal. about that? Yeah. You know, I, well, <laughs> for myself, it's so funny because, like, a lot of time when I'm in like these movement spaces, because we talk about that a lot. And um, I'm in a fellowship, a racial justice fellowship, and they talk about like self care. And one of the questions, like, early on, they're like, what do you do for self care? And I was like, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't even know, like, what that looks like. And so, like, when you hear it a lot, I'll be like, okay. You know, like, for me, like, sometimes I just coast over it. I'm like, like, this is just too much. But I think uh, we're such a trendy, like, mm. we're, I was gonna say. we're so, mm. such yeah. a trendy, like, society, you know, like, self-care, you know, like, brunch that part yeah <laughs> i gained weight that sometimes self-care self is just what you said coasting over it not giving it any more momentum not just being like you okay. know what i can't do that <laughs> you that's, know? Yeah. that's taking care of yourself versus continuing to go uphill yeah continue to fight with or, it or forcing or yourself forcing, to yeah. be like oh i gotta you know i gotta get up i gotta do this you know like we had so after the summit we had two days off and so I'm typically like up. I was like, my partner was like, "Are you?" St I was like, "Yeah, we off today." I'm a. I stayed in the bed till at least. Oh, I don't know, one o'clock. That's so. I don't know why. That's so un. Like, that's lit. I'm sorry <laughs> if I could stay in bed till one o'clock. <laughs> it's a huge deal yeah. to me. Maybe yeah. I. Maybe I be that, on the go too much, but I like that. Yeah. That's self care though. When you allow, if that's what allows you to heal, yeah. so that's taking care of yourself. Yeah. But while we're talking about self care, I know we have to talk about abortion. I, uh, when we talk about abortion, before we get to the real way stuff, you know, uh, we talk about self-care, then we talk about, like, real radical acts of self-care. And I always talk to black women about abortion being a radical act of self-care. Because when black women, when we have to get abortions, we not, so we see the, the other folk at the marches and my body, my choice, and bands off my body. Um, it's not really about choice. Yeah. For us, you know, first of all, we can't afford to have any any rights taken from us because we barely got any now. And, Ooh. you know, <laughs> and keep in mind that most of the time when black women are getting abortion, it has nothing to do just with choice. It's usually those are life impacting um, decisions. It's usually about um, life, saving their lives, saving right. their family, saving their job. When when we, um, it almost every black woman you run into, when we look at their choice to get an abortion, we can trace it back to other um, other um, issues in the community, in in yeah. the environment, you know, in their environment, and yeah. that's what led them to the point of needing an abortion. Yeah. At the Fiat Center, we also power the CIS fund. That's our abortion support fund, and so we help folk um, gain access. Uh, we give them practical support. Uh, to accessing abortions because first of all abortions are still legal they are still legal even in the state of Texas okay so explain that for people that don't so understand what's happening right now we know that um, the SB8 the Senate Bill 8 law has definitely placed some real strict bans on abortion in the state of Texas it's the um, fetal um, cardiac fetal heartbeat law and so basically what that law says is that if there's any um, fetal Act cardiac activity, activity 
um, that you cannot have an abortion and if you're past six weeks. I always say that and because people think that, you know, well, it's six weeks. But, no, if you four weeks and they say they saw some fetal activity, you're not getting an abortion in the state of Texas. So um, what we do know is most um, black women, we don't know. We're pregnant at four and six weeks. Um, yeah. You know, our body just don't allow us to sit still and work like that. You know, I may I may miss a period or have an irregular period and like, damn, you know, I can equate that to the fact that my life is stressful. I, I move around a lot. Right. You know, all that stuff. And yeah. then by the time I'm like, hey, this period really ain't came right, I'm eight to 12 weeks. Yeah. So now it's illegal for me to have an abortion here. And so that so the so abortions are still legal in Texas. The SBA law just um has placed restrictions on us accessing abortions. Yeah. Um but like I said, our um um abortion support fund offers practical support. And so if that looks like um, you know, just needing help with, with transportation to get your um your health care, um, because abortion is health care. Um, right. if that looks like, um, uh, so the needs that black folk have is different. It ain't just that I needed some help to, for an abortion is that child you need care. child care, right? right. You need right. Tra- travel, um, uh, food, like right. it becomes a whole right now it, for us to get practical support for someone to get an abortion that's around 12 or more weeks, it costs the fee cent about $3,500, $3,700. Ooh. We get about 15 people a week. Fifteen a week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Damn. Everybody's not that amount, but that's about the average amount. When because folk are so if we if we say that we help you with transportation, we don't get to take that back when your transportation means you now you got to get on the airplane, not an Uber. Oh, oh my God! Yeah. See, people don't understand what all goes into that. Yeah. So and so, abortion is still legal in other states, and late term abortion is still legal in some states. So some folks just have to um, go elsewhere and, and arrange their procedures, their health care somewhere else. And so we can't afford to tell black women no. No. And here's the thing about that, because I remember you you just made a point about how abortion, a lot of times it's, it's, it's a need. It ain't even my body, my choice. We don't have a choice, and it can be traced back to something. Mm-hmm. Because I had one my senior year of high school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> me and my son's father that was not first time bro had a plan he's mm-hmm. gonna shoot the club up but <laughs> which i got pregnant on birth control right but i remember feeling like i'd always said that i would be a horrible mother my my term was i don't have a motherly bone in my body mm-hmm. and it was because i'd seen so much messed up shit around me growing up mm-hmm. i didn't ever want to be that to a child i didn't think i could be better than my environment so my plan was i'm gonna just stack my bread i'm gonna be childless i was gonna be the forever auntie forever that was the auntie. plan <laughs> But when I had it, and I remember what it was like sitting in that waiting room, and it was a million, it was women from all walks of life, though, because there was a woman that was married. My mm-hmm. husband wasn't there. He just didn't want a kid, but he had her sitting there by her, and I remember she was so pretty, and I was just like, I'm like 18. Why is she here? Yeah. Like, she got yeah. a hug. Yeah. It's just you find out so many stories mm-hmm. when you at Planned Parenthood, uh-huh. sitting in that room, <laughs> and I just remember some, that was the longest three minutes of my life. But it was never a, I just want to have an abortion. It was mm-hmm. like, I'm trying to graduate high school. I'm trying to get out of St. Louis. I'm going to make some out of my life, yeah. and I'm not going to make none out of my life if I have this baby. Yeah, you were a girl. You know, up, we I grew up, up together. So <laughs> I, <ain't> <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to run track. Yeah. I was hiding it from my coach. She uh, ran with my sister and stuff in track. That was yeah. something I didn't miss. And her and I uh, kind of grew up together. We went yeah. to the same high school, but – I'm older than her, so she went to school uh, with my sisters, and they yeah, ran track, teammates. they ran cross country, mm. and um, but we was uh, we were part of what you, uh, what deseg program. We were the desegregation, desegregation kids that got bust out to the so white we schools. would get bust <laughs> from the hood because we lived in the hood. hood. Ooh, like the hood. gunshots! Go to sleep yeah. to the sound of and gunshots. And so <laughs> we would get bust out to this really rich white suburb. Mm. Like one of the richest white suburbs in St. Louis, and that's where we went to high school. So we get up five o'clock in the morning, catch buses all all morning. When yeah. we get out there at eight o'clock after picking up everybody in the hood, <laughs> the white kids they all well rested, right. walking out the house. So um, I just you know want to just say I hear you because I understand what that's like. That was our reality, and those of us that had got out, it was like there you go. That need I needed. Mm-hmm. 
we she needed to I get up out of there. Like, hey, I can't handle you couldn't handle baby. Mm-hmm. And it was I'm a lot of us. Shit, I got one. I, I got a couple. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> got some crotch got ones. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, I, that that urgency, and that's what we're talking about. Like we we yeah. Yeah. Made a choice based based off of necessity, and there was two different reactions. People like y'all just get. I remember getting wheeled into the room, the recovery room, mm-hmm. and being like, "I'm free." Yeah. But I also remember waking up having nightmares. Mm-hmm. So there's like two different things that happen. People there's don't still know. so much stigma in the black community around <laughs> abortion, and in our and because yeah. we so our, our our decisions are so driven by faith, so it guilts mm-hmm. a lot of us. A lot of us. I went through that too, girl. Did do you, have you ever heard about this happened to one of my homegirls? Like when she got pregnant, the Baptist church wanted her to come apologize before mm-hmm. the congregation. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I was church God in Christ, so you know, it was oh. off the chain in a different <laughs> way. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and but my my um homegirl, she's a Jehovah Witness. And so it was the same thing, except for she didn't get to get her abortion. They made her have the baby, but she still had to come and confess oh. all of her sexual shit that I don't even know what they wanted. I wasn't there, but I know that she had to confess her sexual experiences. What you want to say? Like I, it was doggy style. Yes. It was do- oh. like what I the think they, I think that they do go into detail. I don't want to just say that because then the Jehovah Witnesses is going to be mad at I me. I was a throat goat. But if I remember, <laughs> if I remember right, yeah. It, um, and, and that was her, but I heard that from another sister before when I was older, and she was like, no, confession is you have to answer what they ask, and sometimes what they would ask would be. And how that's just, like, so deep, deeply rooted in, like, misogyny because, mm-hmm. like, she didn't do that on her own. Right. Men get a pass. Uh, always. How do y'all feel about men and birth control? I, I think they need to be on birth control. Because be clear, I think I shared a post today <laughs> that said, like, because, you know, our reproductive justice is a full body autonomy, so I believe we can use these organs however the fuck we want to use these organs, right? Yeah. So I could go and lay up with 100 niggas this year. Oh, I can't say, can I say niggas on here? Cause I say you niggas. say everything. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I can go up and have sex with 100 folk. I can only have one full-time pregnancy. Yeah. But dude over here. 100. Dude over here can have sex with 100. He really can't make 100 babies. Right. So who really right. has the problem and needs some help with their family planning and some birth control? Did you see the Facebook post where the dude got like, like he didn't get all 33 kids yeah. together. He was like Nine tagging all the baby mamas like, thanks for making this happen. Yeah, all of these kids were like it. the same age. Like they all that, were the that, same. That, that bottom that row. That whole bottom <laughs> row. I'm like, is this Mary Kate plus eight, John and Kate plus eight? But they were all, they looked like twins. And then you just see it like how social, like how that's glorified. Like it's good, mm-hmm. we fine. We got all his babies with him. Yeah, yeah. What? But we can't talk about abortion. But abortion is like you being responsible. You need to be smarter about who you lay up with. Abortion is a strong part of some folks' family planning. You know what I mean? So when we work in reproductive justice, we believe in what you call full body autonomy. So we believe that folk have the right to birth, to choose not to birth, and to do so safely, freely parent, have families freely how they see fit and free from state sanctioned harm, right? Right. And so if I say I have, you have full body autonomy and I would like full body autonomy, that means I get to use this body of mine how I choose, yeah. right? And you don't get to start passing legislation on how I choose to live my body. And you are doing me harm if your laws are, or or um, keeping me from accessing safe health care. Right. You know what I mean? Because this is the thing. If you don't believe in abortion, just don't get one. Facts. Don't get one and don't pay for one. But why are you creating a barrier for folk who need this health care to access it? Because white women ain't busting it open like they used to. Yeah. <laughs> they, need, <laughs> they need these little workers. Baby, let me tell <laughs> they you need something. laborers. <laughs> let me tell you something. This this SB8 law and Roe versus Wade is not going to affect anything but women of color, black and brown women. Because let me tell you something about rich white men. When they daughters still get pregnant, That's what they when they get their housekeepers pregnant, they're going <laughs> to still the send them. <laughs> yes, on a Schwarzenegger, I'm still talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> I have a whole family within your family. Got your baby mama cleaning up your damn house. Wait, what? You know, honest person that has a whole child by his housekeeper. No, maybe this child is grown now. What? Yes, his <laughs> long term time like main housekeeper. 
Did you know that, Serena? I didn't know that. Yeah, he Did had a, he had a son with her. Boy looked just like him. What year was this? It's been a, it's, it's been this, a minute. This boy grown. Is now. she still the housekeeper? When did she nah, stop she being gone, the housekeeper? But she was his baby mama for a long time. Like they were raising their child, and, and she was still <laughs> taking care of him and Maria House. Damn, what kind of what in the sister wife? No, what Maria the, and Maria left him once it came public. So she was cool as long as they shut the fuck think, up about it. I don't it. know. I can't, well, not cool, I but I can't it was really th- say that she completely knew. I can't really say it. I'm going to tell you why. If you had a twin. Because I tried to t- The baby wasn't around. It's like the housekeeper. Because I have a lived experience within my family where, yeah, it's like a kid and somebody who was, you know, uh, in power. And f- and she, she, they didn't know. What? Didn't what? Know. You can't just breeze over that. I know, but. Uh, <laughs> Wait, I'm, I'm like, did you just catch what I just You know, part of this story, <laughs> part of stories, I can't, you know what I mean? I be okay. having to be cognizant of, okay, okay is this uh, my story to tell? <laughs> yeah. There's a baby in power in the family. Yeah. It's weird. Crunchy as hell. Yeah, y'all got to It's cute, though. Time for you. I almost, I almost put on a wig today. I love headband wigs. They protect your edges. I almost put on a wig today because I took my, well, I cut my locks at the beginning of the year. You did. And then, um, so I got this little afro and my kids said I look like Florida Evans. I was just saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it be your own. <laughs> <laughs> she tried to breeze over this story though. And I didn't like it. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. So, so what I'm saying, <laughs> how I know that that is possible because I have had a lived experience of you re- people really can't have those experiences and still be sharing space and like it's really a secret for a long ass time, but eventually it all comes out. Like but a Tyler Perry movie. Yeah, like a real life type Tyler Perry <laughs> movie, like for real, for real. So either we gonna keep abortions legal or we gonna have all these random kids that belong to kids in the right. family. Y'all gotta keep the secret up. Right, right. But you were saying that white, str- rich white men still gonna so figure it out. So they're still gonna figure it out. So they're Absolutely. still gonna have access. So folk, brown and black women gonna have to come to places like. The fear center to get practical figure support and figure it out, but they're gonna still fly their daughters where they need to be. And matter of fact, they ain't gonna have to because their physician friends are gonna give them abortions. They're still gonna be able to get abortions. They're gonna have access to the pills. They're gonna have access to the surgical abortions. They're going to still be able to get abortions. Meanwhile, anything that's criminal or any kind of civil or um, lawsuits or penalties. They're going to do that. They're going to do that. We already saw it. They're going to do it to brown and black women first. It's a sister. Uh, 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 a, um, Athena's sister. Uh-huh. Uh, you know. Somewhere in, in Texas. Texas. Yeah, closer to the border. She said she had a miscarriage. She went to the emergency room, and they said she uh, she got a, she got um, accused of murder. They put her in jail for murder. Like, the word was murder. What? Yeah. They said she, she killed her baby. She said she had a miscarriage. That's see that, and that's the and the whole thing about y'all bringing up like how it's really just going to impact women of color. Going back real quick when I was in high school, at the time that I had an abortion, I learned that I didn't know what back then they was just calling it the morning after pill. Mm-hmm. But I found out quite a few of my teammates, <laughs> white girls, uh, been were just it. yeah they just they were like one of them one day was like yes yeah, so I had to get a morning after pill because you know we did this that and the third last night and I said what's that? So I'm up here just feeling. The way I feel, having ha- been pregnant, had an abortion, realizing my f- my teammates up here popping morning after pills like Skittles, and I knew nothing about this, and I never heard any of my friends mention anything about this because like some of us didn't know what the hell it was. So they had access like back it's then to crazy. things that we didn't We're know from about. Missouri, and do you know like what was it three weeks ago? Missouri just made the more Plan B illegal. <sighs> so you ca- this is what's fucked up, y'all. We're, we're basically going to overturn Roe versus Wade. Roe versus Wade was never really a law based off of the right to have an abortion. It's more so a law about privacy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's more so, um, what is it, an act or something? What do you call it? A Something about privacy. Well, it's, well it's, uh, it has something to do with the 14th Amendment. Yeah, yeah. So okay, you're yeah. looking at Roe v. Wade, and you're looking at, I think it's uh, Planned Parenthood versus Casey, Casey. which is it, uh, the right to privacy. To privacy. It's the 14th Amendment. So basically what those do, they, so it gives you a right to, so with that, that w- that's what g- has given women a right not to just get abortions, but to get their tubes tied without their husband's consent. See, a lot of folks ain't realizing mm-hmm. that when Roe versus Wade and Casey is overturned, that it's a lot of shit going to turn, yeah. too. 
like like you 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 heard the stories about needing permission of being a certain age to get your tubes tied. Right. It's going to be back. Um, it's going to change some of the parameters around your privacy laws dealing with all of your reproductive health, like big time. It's to the point where like I we don't even we're not even completely clear. We just know it's going to change. Folks going to be able to access those things in a different way. But um yeah, Missouri Plan B. So Plan B is now legal. So be clear that they're overturning Roe, Wade, Casey, and so abortion is going to be illegal on a federal level. Um, they've already defunded places like Planned Parenthood. Who would? So right now we have folks who get abortions, but you, it's not like you can go get your free IUD, your free birth control anymore to prevent pregnancies because um, the federal government has already defunded the way Medicaid would help pay for that. So Planned Parenthood don't give people don't realize that ain't giving birth control no more. So you can't get birth control, you can't get an abortion. Now the morning after pill is illegal. <sighs> Basically, y'all telling folks they gotta swallow these babies, right? All of them. Better get on your you knees. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> Don't let nothing fall. Please. Please. This is really fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> but I said so. Like what? The fuck is really going on? And then ain't no formula for the babies this year. Right. Girl, that's, that's what I was saying. Then like, we got to have, you going to make folks that don't want to parent, parent, and ain't even no food to feed them. And, and we live in a society that is making um, breastfeeding unpopular, making women feel like they have to overwork. So sometimes it's not even health. They can't even he- breastfeed in a healthy way. No. And yeah, so I'm trying to figure out what is the fucking plan. What well, the what, what what is what is really going on? Ain't no plan. Ain't no at the end of the There's day. There's no plan. At the end of the day, just all this is rooted in like white supremacy and the and the ideal that white people are now transitioning <laughs> to the minority. Right. And that these are ways and mechanisms in which they are, you know, they feel like they will be able to stay in control. Mm. Right. That's really that's, that's literally really what it, that's what it is. All it is, which is it's uh, which is some crazy ass shit. Like you just said, like y'all forcing folks to have babies that y'all can't feed, and that you ain't trying to protect in these schools. So we got a it's a it's, it's a yeah. shit it's show a, it's happening. A, it's an entire clusterfuck. You look at Texas. You take Texas for instance, right? So you're we're saying that you're you're telling us you want us to have these babies, but then not doing anything to help sustain these babies. So last mm-hmm. legislative session. Um, Texas, there was a bill, House um, House Bill 133, to extend Medicaid for low-income mm-hmm. uh, mothers on Medicaid from what, two, 60 days to one year. So Texas's own um, maternal mortality morbidity committee, like that was their recommendation. But lawmakers said, mm, no, not so much. We're just gonna we're just gonna give you six months instead of the year. So Marcia, she she has a very uh, I love this analogy she gives. She's like that's just like me drowning, and I'm out a hundred five hundred yards, right? And you send me a lifeguard or a life ring for two hundred and fifty yards. What I'm am I doing? I'm gonna still die. I'm gonna still drown. I'm right. Die. You threw you it's threw me enough. a lifeline that <laughs> <laughs> didn't do shit for me. Did y'all hear C Tag Cruz get confronted last night? Fuck Ted Cruz. <laughs> About the goofiest shit, a British um, reporter like cornered his ass the other day, and he just he couldn't say nothing. I said, "This is some." Saw, uh, oh my god! And the, the ironic thing with like lawmakers, you got all these white girls out here wearing these pussy hats and shit, but mm-hmm. then when it's time to go to the polls, they won't do it. They won't. They they, they vote in. They, they vote right. for they the same bullshit. It's the performative. Same fucking people. That's why I'm be trusting y'all now. Y'all be like, hey. You little woke white girls, you swear, I don't fuck with none of you. My number has significantly <laughs> decreased. I probably got like three. Mm-hmm. And that's just because I know they'll get out there and act a fool, but they'll practice what they preach. They'll mm-hmm. they'll t- they'll take something, it'll they'll let it cost them something. I don't fuck with you. It's gotta cost you something. Yeah. For me to rock with you. I'm gonna need you to put yourself in a line of fire <gasps> in more ways than one. Because like if you gonna rock, if you gonna ride, yeah. let's ride. Something um Marsha always says too, like, I don't really need no allies. We need co conspirators. We need co-conspirators. We need we need some real partners out here. This, the you, you put all your shit on the line because like, allies get coins off us. They yeah. end up saying they I end up regurgitating no what we done said, and somehow they become no the face. Mm, no. 
So I'm not I'm not here for none of that anymore. And we can go all day on this because, baby, this is just we'll, we'll come back to this uh-huh. repeatedly because we don't know this. I mean, it's only May. Right. <laughs> it's only May. <laughs> this summer just starting. to. It ain't yeah. even started yet. Oh, so this is what's it's, crazy. It's going to get real hot. So um, the expectations that SCOTUS will have their decision June sometime. Right. So folks don't know that this is. Not just a conversation about something that's happening in the future. This is happening right, right now. now. Right. So you probably have a few more weeks, and uh, things are going to be different as far as your access to be able to get abortion as health care. And so that's going to disproportionately. So after this law changes, in the entire ni- in, in all of the United States, including Hawaii, there will probably be eight states mm. that have that you can still go to for an abortion because they already have some kind of law in place that's going to offer some protection against this change. and But even in those states, uh, most of those, something is going to look different about the way you can access abortion. Right. Um, you got, was it 12? Or, uh, 12 or so states, I think, that already have laws. Trigger, they're called trigger Trigger ban, laws. Trigger ban. Trigger ban. Which so 13 trigger laws. So there are some laws as soon as some states as soon as Roe Wade is um, overturned, it's like a thirty day window. Uh-huh. Maybe some are like immediate. immediate. Um, if we see mm-hmm. what happened yesterday in, in Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Oklahoma oh, just went quick. ahead and just jumped. They was like, "Fuck, we know it's gonna happen." <laughs> <laughs> you know, Oklahoma like, "Fuck, oh ain't God. no point in us waiting. <laughs> oh ain't nobody God. else getting no abortion up in here. We ain't oh waiting on nobody." So they just went ahead and, and pulled the trigger now. So yeah, basically abortions are illegal in. Um, Oklahoma that impacts um, Texas significantly. Um, those states that still uh, where you can still get an abortion, you know, really um, made a difference in the lives of Black women. We have to keep in mind that most of these states with the strictest um, abortion laws are Southern states, and why that's important to Black folk is because most of the Black population in the United States lives in the South. Right. So, <laughs> and so that's why I'd be like, they were like, y'all just making it about black. Yeah, because it's, it yeah, is. first of all, everything about black to me. But yeah. that is, it, it's going to disproportionately affect black people because more most of the black people live in the states that have the strictest abortion laws, that have voter uh, suppression laws. And voter suppression laws. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, it means something for black folk uh, for this stuff to change. And it's not just about folk having babies we have we don't okay so us being a reproductive justice organization i know we're talking about abortions right now because of roe wade uh, like we really at the fear center we rarely really talking about abortion Mm -hmm. because we don't really have that privilege it's all this other stuff still going on with black folks that sometimes may lead you to getting an abortion but that's like down the road right like when we we talking about you know we talk about birth justice. We got to talk about justice for disabled people, environmental justice. Women living with HIV. Women living with HIV um, that are still being criminalized and still, you know, yeah, still being criminalized for having babies. So women H- in the state of Texas, women living with HIV still, no matter if you, what is it, untraceable, undetectable, undetectable, yeah. um, you still can't have pleasurable sex, even if you disclose to your partner. You show up with a baby, somebody, somebody having a conversation with you. Uh, yeah, so um, that, um, the fact that many folk are living in food deserts, then we talking about the maternal mortality rate being just disproportionately high in this state. In the country, it's ridiculous, but in this state, one of the wealthiest states, our numbers are just astronomical, and that's not just exclusive to um, poor women or women who... Um, well, poor black women. Poor black it's, women. It's across the, it's across the, the spectrum, board for yeah. black women. It has nothing to do with your social or economic status. It has to do with your the fact how your blackness is seen. Right. Period. Because because <sighs> it's the educated middle class, upper middle class black women like this. We losing having babies. So right. It, it has nothing to do with anything but the fact that that system that was not set up for black folk to to function in, to thrive in, is the system that's taking care of us. And so when it sees our blackness, it's harmful to us. Well, that. Well, <laughs> there's so much around this topic. It's just I y'all got to get educated. First of all, tell them how to uh, how to find you. Tell, tell everybody how to find you. 
Uh, you can find us at www.theafiacenter.org. Uh, we actually just launched a um, campaign, All Hands on Deck. Um, and so we are looking for folks to be all hands on deck with us to um, and volunteer, to donate, to donate your, your, your talents, your time. Um, we are always looking for folks to um, be in the fold with us. To we have a legislative session coming up, um, you know, next year. We're prepping for that. We're going to need to be down in Austin. You know, like, let's don't think that it's stopping with SBA. I recently heard, like, there, like these different laws, you know, trying to make it illegal to go out of the state and, like, get an abortion. Like, this is just because Roe is overturned. Like, right. it's, that's not, like, that's not the end of it. Um, so we need folks in the fold with us. Indeed. Right. Well, that's it. She said it. We need folks. <laughs> there we we go. need folks to come and get in the fold with us. If you want to support the Fear Center, the uh, if you can't physically be in the fold with us, the main way you can afford uh, support us is by donating yep. uh, to the f- at the Fear dot org. Same website. Hit the click the donate link and donate how you can. The main way that folks who have privilege can use their privilege is is by paying with their privilege. Ah. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't earn that privilege, so you need to pay for that privilege. So I suggest that folk who want to support us who have privilege um, use it and use a lot of it. The money that jingles. <laughs> yeah. What is it? The money that jingles, but we like the money that folds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we like the money that folds. That's what we're trying to do. We like the money that you need a wire transfer for. Period. Right? Let's <laughs> get a cracking with them wire that's fucking the, that's kind of money transfers. Like. So. But, um, the Fear Center, we on the ground doing the work in the community um, for black folk um, at our summit last week. And I know we're wrapping up um, I know we talked about some of the sessions at our summit, but just to go back to that, we actually um, scholarshiped and trained 15 black doulas that are going to be here working in the community, and these are all full-spectrum doulas who are going to be on the grounds helping women who are having baby women, babies, women who are choosing not to have babies, and helping support and hold the hands of, of black women through their postpartum journey. So yeah. we are doing the work, and we just need the community to, to continue to support us in the work. So call to action. Um, so we can we can sit on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and type and talk all day long, or you can go ahead and get some skin in the game. So thanking the ladies for coming in Thank today. Um, yeah. And again, y'all, we're still pandemic-ish. Wear applicable, wear your mask, wash your hands. <laughs> Socially distance, look mm-hmm. after your people, write these checks, and when you get a free moment, please remember to clean out your dirty bag. Till next time. Well, darling, there's only one God. Darling.